I'm Dr. Etisham, professor of pathology, and now we are going to discuss a tumor known as adenosarcoma. Now, this tumor is mostly arise in the endometrium and very rarely seen in the cervix and also again like other tumors it manifests itself as abnormal uterine bleeding. Now regarding the gross pathology this tumor present as a solitary sessile polypoidal mass which is filling the entire endometrial cavity and when you cut it it is tan brown in color with areas of hemorrhages and necrosis. Now as far as uh, the histological features of this tumor is concerned. They are characteristic polypoidal lesions with malignant stroma which has got pleomorphic spindle cells and many mitotic figures which range from 4 or 5 or up to 20 per 10 high power field and the lining epithelium is non-malignant or do not show atypia non-malignant but the epithelium is atypical epithelium which is lining this uh, polypidal lesion is mostly mucinous serous clear cell type or schema cell type the stroma is usually homologous but uh, that is uh, fibrous sarcoma or uh, but one can find uh, they can be rhabdomyosarcoma or sometimes it's just like that of uh, chondrosarcoma. Now if we consider the immunohistochemistry it is cytokeratin positive, bimentin positive, desmin may be positive. These are the few special stains or immunohistochemistry which is being carried out to diagnose this tumor. Now the other lesion is stromal nodule where they are very rare but they are benign lesions. They can occur at any age but uh, Mostly they are seen postmenopausal, usually present with uh, abnormal bleeding and the uh, uterus may be enlarged. Gross features, again, they are well circumscribed, they are solid, they are tan gray masses, unencapsulated with pushing borders. Histopathology is concerned, small, uniform, oval to spindle shaped cells which resemble like that of uh, endometrial stromal cells. Minimal cytological atypia that means uh, 10 mitotic figures or less than 10 mitotic figures per 10 high power field. There are numerous thin walled blood vessels which are present amongst the stromal cells and they look like as spiral arterioles, very small areas of necrosis or areas of calcifications or decidualization or they are foamy macrophages which can be present. Immunohistochemistry is concerned. They are vimentin positive, reticulin positive, then CD10 positive, cytokeratin negative, SMA, desmin mostly negative and then epithelial membrane antigen that is EMA negative. Now we are going to discuss endometrial polyps. Endometrial polyps are exophytic masses which vary in size and they project into the endometrial cavity. They may be single or multiple and are usually sessile but when they are of larger size they are pedunculated. They range from 0 0.5 to 3 centimeter in diameter. These polyps are asymptomatic but may cause abnormal bleeding which is intramenstrual or postmenopausal. They may undergo ulceration or necrosis. The endometrial glands which are present within the polyps are hyperplastic or atrophic but Occasionally, they show secretory changes and once they show secretory changes, we call them as functional polyps. The polyps in which the glands are hyperplastic develop in association with generalized endometrial hyperplasia. 
and they are responsive to the growth effect of estrogen and show little or no response to progesterone rarely adenocarcinomas arise within the endometrial polyps now in this photograph you can appreciate the gross appearance of the endometrial polyp you can very well see that endometrial polyp is present in the endometrial cavity and is reddish brown in color in this photograph you can appreciate the microscopic features of endometrial polyp there is a lining of epithelium and the endometrial glands are embedded in endometrial stoma please note that in this case the endometrial glands are without any secretory activity